Hello, I um, am here to um, provide a how-to video on creating helmet logos that can be applied to the team um, player sprites for use in Pro Strategy Football 2023. Um, the nice thing about the new version of Pro Strategy Football 2023 in terms of customization is that the new player sprites um, are a little bit larger. In fact, they're a lot larger, um, so you can get a lot more detail, see a lot more detail uh, on those helmets um, versus what you could previously. And so it's kind of opened up a whole new opportunity to, to go back and, and create these anew uh, from what have been created in previous years. Um, and so this was something that I spent a lot of time doing over the summer in anticipation of the upcoming release. Um, I'd gotten a copy um, of the of the of the uniform template and um, had been working on creating these for the longest time. It was very painstaking, took hundreds and hundreds of hours, um, but it was well worth it. And um, as time consuming as it is, um, hopefully you know everyone has has seen the results of that and, and realizes that it's um, it's something that was very worthwhile and satisfying uh, once we got to the end result. So I want to provide this little bit of instruction so folks can see how I went about doing it. And, and hopefully that will create um, an impetus for others to, to, to go in and, and start creating their own as well, uh, particularly around NCAA. I know there's a big groundswell for there to be an NCAA mod. I, quite frankly, don't have the energy for it after creating all the NFL teams uh, going back, uh, you know, some 80 years um, so hoping somebody can pick up the mantle and do this. Um, and, and there are a few out there that do have the know-how to do this and, and probably do it better than me and, and probably easier, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. So the program I use is called, you know, Adobe Photoshop. It's a very common program. Um, the version I use is actually CS2, which is a very old version of, of the application. It's one that for a while there was offered for free because it had stopped being supported uh, by Adobe. Um, that's the only downside to the program is that, um, you know, it is free. That's a good thing, but it's not supported. Therefore, it can be a little unstable at times. Um, so I do save my work quite frequently when I'm using it just to keep it from, you know, sometimes it'll crash in the middle of something or some of the functionality that just, just doesn't work. Um, and so um, it can create some hassles if I haven't saved my work. Um, you know, I found myself in some difficult spots before where I've lost some stuff. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the player uh, or the uniform template. So this was a template that um, was originally uh, worked on by a gentleman by the name. He goes by the name Dream Teams. Um, he created the Metro Football League mod um, for uh, Pro Strategy Football. And um, he knows a heck of a lot more than I do. Uh, very creative, very talented. Um, and uh, he was able to add a lot of layers to this um, using an original um, um, you know, player model that was uh, created for Kerry, Kerry Batts, the, uh, the, the developer of Pro Strategy Football uh, by, by an independent third party. And um, at first, you know, I was looking at these thinking they were very kind of cartoonish looking, but they work really, really well within the game. Um, they, they look fantastic, in fact. Um, in the game itself, and, and I've really grown to, um, to to really like them. There's a lot of them, and yes, you have to put a helmet lug on each and every one of them. Um, so again, it's a time-consuming process, but it's not difficult. The first thing I typically do, though, is I open this application. You can see all these layers on the right. You don't need to worry about those yet. Uh, we'll get to those. That's going to happen when we create the uniform. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and save this in its current state. And right now, these helmets are sort of gray color or silvish color. That's okay because we're going to use the Raiders as a model here. Um, we're going to create a, a Raiders helmet. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to save it as a PNG file. And I'm going to go ahead and stick it in my, it's already, I'm already in my mods folder. I created a, a separate mods folder within the PSF 2023 folder, which is kept in my documents file. So let's go right back here. Do, 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 do. And mods. And then I've got a separate um, folder called Team Helmet Logos. And down here, I saved a bunch of these just as temp files. So let's go ahead and save this one as temp. 
just override the one that's already in the system. Let's go ahead and exit out of this once it, it's done doing all of its um, all of its stuff here, all of its stuff that uh, that it has to do that I'm not familiar with because I'm no computer guru, so I know nothing about how things work. I just know they work, and I'm you know knowledgeable enough to be dangerous in terms of getting it to work. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Once it's done doing its little blue wheel spinning. And let's go back here and open up that file. And this is going to be our canvas. And right now it's at 33%. This is 30, 33% um, is what you're seeing right now in terms of the size of the image. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up to 600. And now it's going to give me, again, a much uh, larger canvas space to work from. Um, I went out on the internet and just found like a, just a general Raiders logo. You can do this, again, with any logo you're looking for. Um, what I typically do is I have to I actually, you know, right now this is at 100%. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the background transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and use this tool. Um, which is the magic wand. I'm going to go ahead and just click it in here so this out, outside border is deleted. Hit the delete button. And this is now transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect. And now what I want to do is I want to um, shrink this down to the size it needs to be so that it can be affixed to this helmet. Um, so right now, the best way to do that is to make certain you're doing an apples to apples comparison. Right now, this image is at 600%, this one's at 100%. Let's go ahead and make this one 600%. You can see it's now very, very large. So we've got a long way to go to get it down to the size it needs to be to look good on this helmet. So I'm going to go up here to image. I'm going to go to image size. And I'm going to guess first, because I don't really know. But the one thing I have to do is whenever I change something from one size to another, either going up or down, but mostly going down, you have to make certain that your resolution is as high as it can get. I usually make it a million. Okay, and then I change the uh, percentage down to, we'll start at 5% and see what that leaves us with. Okay, now you can see right now, Again, this is apples to apples. Looking at this logo and comparing it to this helmet, that's way, way big, right? has to go down even farther. So let's go back up here and undo the image size. Let's do it again. Change the resolution to 1 million. And the percentage now, let's go down. To, let's take it down to 3%. Let's see what that does. Okay, we're getting warmer. Let's go ahead and select all, copy it. And let's see what it looks like if we paste it in here. So we're going to move this over. And that looks about right. I think that's a good size. So what I did here was I, I changed from my magic wand to the move tool. And I simply just, as I after I pasted that image here, I just simply just moved it over. Okay? So that's one down, right? So now you can see I've got a lot more to go. And all I'm going to do because this was already copied, I can paste it again over here. Use the Move tool, put it in place. Don't worry about it being exactly in the exact same spot as the previous image. It doesn't have to be perfect, because you're not going to notice that at 10,000 feet when you're watching the game play out. The, the, the sprites are going to be a lot smaller. So you can keep it the way it is, um, the way it's looking right now. And you're probably wondering, well, hey, your, your jersey's red. Aren't the Raiders black? Yes, they are. We'll get to that. What All we're doing right now, believe it or not, is we're creating a sprite sheet that's only going to contain the logos. And the way that works is as I'm pasting these in, notice that on the right here, these are the layers, right? And the ones that have the eyes next to them are telling me that that means they're visible to me in this in this image. If I take this one out, which is the original image, all that I'm seeing then are the helmet logos. Ultimately, when all the logos are entered, this is what's going to get saved. Okay? And that's what's going to be actually dropped into the template 
at the end when we create the uniform. So let's go back. And by the way, I mentioned the fact that I save a lot. So let me show you what I do there. So let me, the first thing I do is I go through here and I just drop all these into the images that kind of look the same. Okay. So on, so on, so forth, right? Um, you'll notice that uh, the images will start to change as you move through the sprite sheet. So you, now you've got a player looking the other way. Now, oftentimes with some logos, right? Let's say it's the Rams logo, right? Well, you'd have to reverse this. You'd have to flip it around. Well, the Raiders' logo is going to look the same no matter what direction you're look, the, the helmet's pointed in. So you can just still go ahead and keep doing, keep going, right? Before we go any further, let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and save this right now. Um, but before I do that, in order to make sure these logos stay in the right spot, so that when I then paste it into the, the, the uniform image template, I need to actually create what I call anchors. And these are just one, it's just basically one pixel. Um, and so I have to change, let me go ahead and change my color. Let me go ahead and just do using the, um, the color dropper or whatever that tool is called here over here. Um, the eyedropper tool. Let's go ahead and select black and let's go then to the pencil tool. And we're going to go up to the very farthest point in the upper left-hand corner of the sprite sheet. And we're going to place one dot there. And we're going to scroll all the way to the right and then all the way down and put another dot in the lower uh, right hand corner. And again, what that does is it anchors everything that I create in the middle into place so that it doesn't move. OK, so I can now go back. I can unselect this, that first layer and save this change the, the, the format type to PNG, and then I'll save it as whatever I want to save it. You know, what I was doing was just saving it as the name of the, the team. So Raiders, I believe I had it as Raiders 64 to 22. I'm not going to override what I already had, um, but that's what I would save it as. And I would save that frequently as I'm creating the logos. Now, as you get through these images, you're going to notice that it changes a little bit, see? So now you've got, you know, players looking right or left, and that's fine. Those are easy. And I can keep keep going. Okay? But things are eventually going to change. You're going to get some images where the player is looking kind of diagonally in one direction or the other. You're going to have to adjust your logo accordingly. Okay? So what I'll do then is I'll create a new image Paste it in here. Let me blow this up to 600. So it's the same size as the one that's already there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some of these um, transform tools to scale it down so that it fits properly on the helmet. This is where it gets a little tricky. So I've kind of learned there's different ways to do this. Everybody has their own way. Um, first of all, because it's going on the side of the helmet, I have to sh I have to kind of shrink the image down vertically. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to transform and then scale. And then all I'm doing is going here to the right. See where that little arrow is pointing in two directions? I can click and drag it over like so. I usually go about two thirds of the way in, right about there. And maybe that's about right. Go up here and hit your check mark. Now, I can maybe put it in there just like that, but what I'd like to do is do in some additional transforming by warping the image a bit because the helmet is rounded. What I want to do is kind of move things a little bit this way, just a tad, not much. This last one here, I'll move probably a little bit further, but you can see what I'm doing here. And 
and, I'm, and again, not perfect. Now I'm going to take this and select it, copy it, and paste it into the image here. And right about there is probably where I want it. So I'm going to do that now for every image where the player is facing in this direction. Okay. I'll do the same way in reverse when I find an image where it's the other way. Okay. Um, but again, these are your friends. These little these little tools down here. These these transform tools. Um, you use those to kind of again warp or scale the image accordingly. When you get down here at the bottom to some of these images, what, there's a couple images here where the player is actually upside down. Um, and that's really easy. You're just, just going to simply just take the take the image, uh, the regular image. So let's go back here. Where is that? Um, let's just undo what we did. Step backward a little bit. And let's just take this image and go rotate canvas. And we'll hit arbitrary. I usually go about 45 degrees. or No, 135 degrees is what I got in here. I'm going to go counterclockwise. Select all, copy, and paste it like so. So again, you're just going to do this the whole way. Now, you'll notice you're, you're getting a ton. And by the time this is over, you're going to have about 100 layers. Okay, and that's okay. Because at the end of the day, all you're going to do is you're going to unselect that. And then you're going to save it as, you know, the way it is. So the way it's going to end up looking when you're all said and done, and I have this Raiders sheet already saved. saved as Raiders 64 to 22. This is what it looks like. I'm going to blow it up here so you can see it. And there's all your logos. Okay. And you can see I've got my anchor right there, upper left-hand corner. And that's how the rest of the images look. They're all cut off because of they, again, because of those diagonal um, helmet, the, the diagonal um, look that the, that the player's, you know, doing. Um, so it looks a little bit different, but, but that's, but that's what, you know, that's kind of what, what the images will look like when you get to the, um, let's see, let me get out of here. Let me show a more recent one I did. It was probably, let's see, the bell, Philadelphia bell. This was a team from the world football league. You can see I got those there. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and let's go ahead and select all copy and then let's go to the template that I had opened up earlier and this takes about 30 seconds to open typically it's a big big file so make sure you're uh, make sure you got a good amount of RAM um, otherwise you might be sitting here a while as I do, because I don't have a lot of RAM. I got about eight, eight gigabytes of RAM, which I guess isn't bad, but you know, could be better. Um, so this is going to open up here, and what I like to do is I like to blow this up to at least a hundred percent, and I've already selected and copied the entire sheet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to uh, go to the right here where I have my layers. And you can see the helmet logos are actually towards the bottom. Now, when the template was originally created, they were way up here at the top. And I moved them down here because I think they work better that way. If you have a, a large logo, I want it to kind of be tucked underneath the face mask. So I keep it below the face mask. And I'll give you an example. So, for example, these are two logos that were created by Dream Teams. And these are awesome, by the way. This Bengals logo. I mean, that... That looks so sharp, right? And the cool thing about it is by putting it down here at the bottom, not only is it embedded underneath the face masks where it needs to be, but it's also um, got the shadows, right? The shadows aren't, uh, it's not, you don't see the logo uh, overriding the shadows. Here's the Rams logo. Um, so it's really, really cool. And this is where you're going to put the, the new logo, right? So the one I just created, or the one that I just saved and opened up, and select it is the bell and I'm going to go ahead and put it here so I'm going to go up here to edit 
I'm going to paste. And boom, there it is. And remember those anchors? So the reason why we have those anchors, you can't see it here because it's a lighter color, but the reason those anchors were put in, put in so that when you paste it in here, those, those logos go exactly where they need to go. They're not off center because they could be, right? You could have them um, actually, I mean, just trying to move them there, but um, yeah, see, you could have them all over the place, right? So we're going to go ahead and step backward, put them back on the helmet. Um, once you do everything else that you need to do in terms of adjusting your colors, your stripes, everything else you need to do to create the uniform, um, you can then go ahead and, um, and save the image as one of the sprite sheets. Um, so something like the helmet, for example, you know, you can go ahead and select that. Um, there's all kinds of stuff in here. So this is something I will pr provide a link to, uh, this template. I have it saved on my Google Drive. So anybody should be able to download it. Um, but hopefully this helps um, explain how those logos are created. And um, feel free to put uh, comments in, in, you know, here um, at my, at, you know, underneath the video, just, just comment if there's any questions. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And um, again, hope this helps. Thanks.